Hello, everyone. I'm Yifan Wang from Tsinghua University. It's a great pleasure to be here today to present our recent work on intersectional to site fairness in recommendation. Recently, fairness in recommendation has attracted increasing attention. It can be considered at an individual level or group level. In this work, we focus on group fairness. Based on the stakeholders, fairness in recommendation can be divided into three types. First, user fairness, which aims to provide similar recommendation performance across different user groups. Second, item fairness, which aims to ensure fair exposure opportunities or provide similar performance across various item groups. And lastly, two-sided fairness, which seeks to ensure fairness for both users and items at the same time. However, we argue that even if a recommended system satisfies two-sided fairness, there may exist a nuanced form of unfairness, intersectional two-sided unfairness. Here we present a toy example to illustrate this concept. Simply put, in this example, we can observe fair results on both user and item sides. However, some interest in the intersection of user group and item group, which we call the intersectional two-sided group, uh, receive discrimination such as females' interest in horror movies. Such discrimination has several harms. For users and items, it hinders part of user interest and potential consumers. For the platform, it may limit the growth of a diverse user item ecosystem. Uh, for the society, it may reinforce the social polarization issue. So it's important to address this problem for a consumer system. Let's formally define intersectional two-side fairness. We build on the traditional top one recommendation task. Suppose the users and items are divided into P and Q groups. Then the potential interaction can be divided into P times Q intersectional groups. To study fairness, we further define the intersectional group utility, which reflects the received recommendation performance of potential interactions in this group. Without loss of generality, we use a recall-based metric here. Based on the utility definition, intersectional two-sided fairness aims to provide similar utilities for different intersectional two-sided groups. Intuitively, it seeks the independence of the group utilities and their two-sided group information. Please note here we focus on performance-based utility instead of exposure-based utility, as the latter does not consider users' true preference. We conduct we conduct uh, empirical experiments to explore the existence of such unfairness and uh, the effectiveness of current methods. The dataset we use is Moylan's 1 billion. For, easy for easier observation, we limit users and items into two groups. We consider three types of methods, fairness unaware methods, single-sided methods, and two-sided methods. Although there is no performance-based two-sided two -sided fairness methods, we include multi-FR, uh, for the sake of completeness. It focuses on exposure-based fairness on the item side. Below, we investigate whether such unfairness exists. Uh, the table on the left dis on the right displays the result of BPR. From the single side view, we can find that children get a better performance than horrors, while male and females uh, get very similar performance without significant difference. Uh, from two-side view, the model should improve the recommendation quality for horror group and keeping the uh, current fair stats f on the user side. However, we can see a different story from the intersectional two-side view. As shown in the table, uh, the intersectional group on the diagonal receive better performance. The performance gap between the best group and the worst group is about uh, 26% which indicates the unfairness uh, indeed exists. Next, we investigate the effectiveness of current methods. Uh, as shown in the table, for item fairness methods, Fairneg indeed improve item fairness. However, it, improve, uh, all the performance, uh, it, it improves the performance for all the horror group. This leads to better performance for some, for some advantage groups and worse performance for some disordered group. A similar phenomenon can be found for user fairness. Uh, this single side method cannot improve in central two-side fairness very well. As for two-side fairness, we can find that the worst in central group uh, receive worse recommendations. 
Uh, as current methods cannot effectively mitigate such unfairness, it's important to design an uh, effective method. So we propose a new method, RTFR. The motivation is that the utility of a group is determined by the rank of positives in this group. These positives compete with two kinds of samples, all the negatives and positives from other gr groups. So we divide the intersectional two-sided fairness into two fairness groups to balance these competitions separately. The first goal is that for different intersectional groups, the model should have a similar distinguishability between positives and negatives. The second goal is the model should treat uh, positives in different groups fairly. Uh, they should have similar prediction scores uh, for different for positives in different uh, intersectional groups. Let's first consider the first uh, goal. Uh, first, we need to find these intersectional groups with poor distinguishability on the test data. Since test data is not variable, we can treat the train loss as a proxy as they are highly related to the distinguishability and can be optimized by gradient descent. However, training loss on a single parameter may be sensitive to random perturbation. To enhance training and test consistency, inspired by sharpness aware optimization, we use a worst training loss within a bounded region of current parameters as the proxy. The next question is how to balance this sharpness aware loss between different groups. An intuitive idea is rewriting. The group distributionally robust optimization can be used to achieve this goal. However, it ignores the collaboration between different groups, which is important for the common system. To consider the relationship between different groups, we model the contribution of one group to other group and further assign fair weights to each group. For more details, please refer to our paper. Next is the second goal. Uh, as direct controlling the predicting score may result in a large accuracy loss, we use an indirect method here. Noting that the original range of prediction score is the real number domain, we can restrict the prediction score into a certain range, thus preventing our optimization of some positives. Specifically, we use an embedding normalization, normalization manner here, which has some advantage, uh, which has some additional advantages. For more discussions, please refer to our paper. Finally, experiments. We use three real datasets, Muilens, Tenrec, and LastFM. And here are our baselines. We evaluate from accuracy and fairness. For fairness, we use CV and mean to measure intersectional two-sided unfairness. Here, CV measures the inequality of utilities between different groups while mean measures the utility of the worst performing intersectional groups. We also apply CV to uh, user side and item side to measure user and item fairness. Next, experimental results. As shown in the table, uh, for fairness, our methods outperforms all the baseline across all the datasets. Uh, the gold performance can be attributed to its consideration of intersectional groups and its optimization of both two fairness scores. Moreover, for accuracy, our methods maintain a similar or even better accuracy. We next conduct a ablation study on the three components in our methods. As shown in the figure, we can see that each component is effective in enhanced fairness, and the effectiveness shows some variation depends on datasets. For accuracy, we see a consistent improvement when adding prediction normalization. This could uh, be owing to its ability to elevate popularity bias as analyzed in previous work. We further conduct ablation studies on two fairness scores. As shown in the figure, we can find that both scores are important for fairness, uh, especially on the TenRec dataset. Besides, uh, only go to show the best accuracy but it's not effective in, in improving fairness. Uh, as our method is applied to ranking stage, we next verify its compatibility with fairness aware ranking methods focusing on exposure fairness. As shown in the figure, for exposure fairness, using our methods as inputs can achieve similar or even better fairness than BPR, which validates the compatibility of our methods. Uh, besides, for intersectional two-sided fairness, we can see ranking can significantly damage fairness, 
but our methods still perform better when compared to BPR, highlighting its utility even with distance during the ranking stage. Uh, summary, we formulate and study the intersectional two-side fairness in the top recommendation. We empirically show the existence of such unfairness and the effectiveness of current methods. Uh, we further propose a new methods to mitigate this problem and use extensive experiments where that is effectiveness. Uh, it's uh, the effectiveness. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take any question.